I believe that we all share the same goal, which is to have a better life. And within this context of having a better life, what we need to feel is that we matter. We matter to ourselves and we matter to others. Which raises a question of how do we matter in the workplace? And today, on the umbrella of Jobs of the Future, I want to talk to you about uh, professional relevance. What this means is that um, you provide skills and knowledge to your corporation that allows them to advance their quality of their services to their clientele. And in this regard, we need to understand what are going to be the requirements of the job of the future and how well we align with those. So we're going to look at education, experience, and your network and you can, you know, how you can hit this target. I'm going to share with you a tool that I use to, for me to see what the future looks like. It's um, the S-curve. And with the S-curve, we can spy on the future. How many of you use iPads? Very good. How many of you use laptops to communicate? Most of you. Anyone using the typewriter to do that? <laughs> um, none of you. The best place to be is with the early adopters. At this first knee of the S curve, this is where some wonderful things happen to you professionally. And in fact, uh, we're going to see that in there, you get very high incomes, you get wonderful uh, marriage increases. This S curve has a length of less than five years, which practically means that if you were to uh, catch a new trend, if you were to catch a new S curve, um, you would be uh, among other people within two and a half years, nothing special about you, and you would be obsolete within five years. So the key is to really have a unique value at the first knee of the S-curve. Um, I'm going to use this S-curve concept and I'm going to flip it over, which means that um, think about the waterfall as being a reverse S-curve. And at the top of this knee, it's very exciting because this is where the funding is. This is where you have the government funding. This is where you have military funding and corporations funding from groups who want to move forward and be a little bit different. So this is what I call the easy spot. And your life purpose as a professional should be to always keep your job at that need of the S-curve. Um, the concept of the waterfall is wonderful because it means that as soon as you position yourself for uh, being right in line with a, a waterfall, you're going to be pulled by the energy. People who work in um, on experts have multiple life professional life going on all in parallel. So I'm going to talk about some of the exciting experts that I see and that may inspire you to uh, work towards that. It has to do with digital worlds entering our lives and the fact that we're moving toward the world of the small. If you look at the next video, this young Japanese woman welcomes patients at the hospital in Japan, and truly, she's a virtual person. The, word of, uh, the virtual world is merging with a real world, and in fact, she's a robot. That's what she looks like under the skin. This work has been done by um, the University of Osaka, and it's uh, revolutionary. This also is a movie from USC, which, um, if it were to work, <laughs> you would see that uh, she has been computer generated from the real actress Emily O'Brien, and uh, there are multiple layers of skin under her. So uh, it's virtual 2D world merging with real world. The next uh, short video has to do with uh, 3D representation of the same concept. So this is real audience, real musicians on stage, but it's a uh, Holographic singer. In that concert in Japan, there were 12 singers, and people paid a uh, very high value to get in and, and, and see that, that show. It's coming to the United States in Los Angeles last July. So, 
So if we look at uh, the next one, it's, a, it's an abstract from a movie called A Day in Glass. Uh, it was put together by Koning, but what it talks about is smart surfaces that um, uh, allow you to integrate a lot of the functions you do today separately, but it's fully integrated into your life. There are a lot of S curves in this space with designing, implementing, and also all the psychological factors that need to be analyzed, positioned, and marketed to bring this into the homes. So um, you see some of the functionalities that you currently would have on your cell phone, but it's into your home surface. Some of the tele telecommunications uh, capabilities also are moving into the environment. So if we look at the kind of veneer of knowledge that you could gain to be in that space, it would just be going and getting a certification on some of those topics or, or read a lot about it. I recommend to start a blog about some of those topics because if you were to promote that, you would uh, start being among you know, the top 5% of people who care about the space. So the type of jobs of the future you would have here are anything that combines virtual world with reality uh, and provide an immersive environment. Those jobs will have fancy names uh, just captured here, you know, the basic um, spirit of combining virtual with real world. So if we start looking at the next s curves in the world of s curve, there's a lot of s curves, and those are longer than five years. They are typically 10 to 20 years because it's driven by aging. And in fact, the primary um, patient for the next few years is going to be the elderly lady. And with this, she has needs for comfort, safety, as well as the ability to manage her chronic diseases. We have come to realization that one treatment doesn't fit fit all, and that it needs to be customized, especially on the cancer side, where we need some cocktails to be able to cure people. And this is fed by uh, the industry of genetic analysis. We understand better as gene makeup, uh, DNA analysis is happening in this, and this allows us not only to um, select a very specific treatment, but it allows us to predict what's going to happen to you later in life. And with this, we're moving toward a predictive medicine. And with predictive medicine, once you know what may happen to you down the line, it allows you to develop a series of vaccines, things you could take at age 10 that would prevent you from being sick at, at age 40 or 50 or later. So we're moving from episodic treatment when you're sick to predictive preventive medicine um, for the management of your health across your life. So next, we're going to look at some other um, veneers you could gain to kind of wiggle your way into this space. It's uh, reading about the space of the small stem cells that reprogram themselves in any cells in the body. Um, on the technical side, microelectronics, nanoelectronics, and very soon, picoelectronics are right there. In terms of job of the future, uh, anything that has to do with helping predict diseases and developing customized solutions Anything on the test development side in healthcare is really hot, and vaccine development. On the IT side, large database jobs. The new frontier is the brain. We are starting to be able to use the energy from the brain to trigger some activities, like a robotic activity. It's fascinating. This is definitely going to revolutionize any industry segments. Here is uh, in the game industry, they are starting to use that. The game Emotive allows you to wear this uh, funky looking helmet and then to move things on the screen with the power of your mind, your, your intention. And um, exciting, it's being used also on the healthcare side, and the next movie is going to show you that. Once in a while, we run across a science story that's hard to believe until you see it. That's how we felt about this story. When we first saw human beings operating computers, writing emails and driving wheelchairs with nothing but their thoughts. Quietly, in a number of laboratories, an astounding technology is developing that directly connects the human brain to a computer. It's like a sudden leap in human evolution, a leap that could one day help paralyze people to walk again and amputees to move bionic limbs. Scott Mattler was a husband, father, and successful neuroscientist when he received perhaps the worst news imaginable. At the age of 40, he could run a marathon in three and a half hours.
hours, but it was about that time that he discovered he had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. His brain was losing its connection to virtually every muscle in his body. The near total paralysis would also stop his lungs. Sharp as ever, but his body has failed. Doctors call it locked-in syndrome. Scott and his wife Lynn learned to communicate with about the only thing he has left, eye movement. He'll look at you for yes, right. and for no. And for no, he looks away. Yeah. But recently, Scott found a new voice. Can everyone hear the PV? I apologize for the quality of the voice. Brain Computer Interface, or BCI. He wears a cap that picks up the electrical activity of his brain and allows him to select letters simply by thinking about them. Then the com So picking up brain energy is going to revolutionize many segments. If you want to get involved in this space, get very familiar with some of those uh, areas. There's, it will touch all professions and will really allow you to be right at the beginning of experts. So a part of the job of the future is anything that involves a brain-machine interface. Game developers are right there right now. Anything that has to do with using uh, mobile technologies to integrate into this space and consumer habits analysis. My favorite is 3D printing. It's entering um, um, the workplace. It's entering the home too. It's really cool. And what it consists of is using a printer that prints layers at a time and creates a 3D representation of an object. It's driven by cost because it really saves a lot of material to do that as opposed to rapid prototyping that costs lots of material. It's, um, it's entering the homes and imagine what you can do at home if you had that. You can do some very complex structures. It even enters the fashion industry, starting to print uh, dresses out of that. Uh, this gentleman built Stockholm completely out of 3D printing and Google Earth. You can use this on the healthcare side to model a leg and to develop um, prosthesis. Also really neat, you can use ultrasound imaging to try to do some plastic representations. Um, and this is a whole market by itself. Also you can use X-ray information for surgeons to be able to duplicate the bone structure and more some implants. We're starting to print human material to try to duplicate organs. It's a fascinating field. It's a beautiful area for escorts. We want to get in that. At USC, we print walls outside on the campus with big toothpaste tubes that are controlled by a computer. It's an equivalent of 3D printing. So, if we now go and look back at uh, what we need to um, maybe uh, refresh to be right in there, anything that has to do with drafting, understanding of material science and chemistry would make you really hot. And if you get involved into fluid deposition and printing um, technologies, like being a replicator specialist, I have another cool name, but this is my name for now, you will be right there at the beginning of many escorts. So we're circling back to our mission, and truly what our mission is, now, how do we remain professionally relevant? <laughs> the current method don't work. You know, working hard is not working. You need to be very strategic about how you remain very fresh to your work. And to, you need to practice the art of remaining relevant. And that means you need to always think about, is my career job at the beginning of, beginning of an S curve? <coughs> and this, I really believe, is an act of spreading. Thank you.